when they arrived, there was a, an Aboriginal people here, a native people called the Guanche. And it's fascinating to think that the Guanche were probably, possibly, <laughs> not probably, I can't say that really because the evidence isn't that clear, but possibly uh, descendants of the people who, who uh, inhabited the, the legendary uh, land of Atlantis. Hi everybody, could our ancient history be a portal to knowledge about our true nature? As I said in my interview with Brian Forrester, the latest episode on the podcast, uh, it, it, it's quite shocking really to realize how little we know about our origins. Our, where we where we come from, where human beings actually come from. I mean, the documented history that we are taught about in school go, I mean, when we talk about advanced civilizations in one form or the other, it goes back about five, six thousand years, which is nothing, nothing, not even in the, in the perspective of, of, of the history of Homo sapiens, not to speak about the history of Earth itself, of course, and life itself. In mainstream education, we're told stories. Those stories are just theories. Uh, and to be honest, uh, those stories are quite unimaginative. But independent researchers such as Brian Forrester and many others are doing an incredible job in trying to unveil the mysteries of our past. Oftentimes, as Brian said in, in, in the episode here, um, the evidence of lost civilizations that the mainstream education system is not telling about. The evidence of that is staring us in the face, often in the form of, you know, megalithic structures that simply cannot have been built by the civilizations that we're told in school built them. So who did that then? Who built them? Most likely whoever did it were advanced, and perished in a, an enormous, or, or, or several enormous cataclysms some 12,000 to 13,000 years ago. Many talk about the one that is called Atlantis. Uh, there are different ideas as to when it could have existed and exactly where it could have existed. But the pivotal source for this information, for this these stories, these, these accounts about Atlantis, is Plato. And he told about this uh, in two um, Socratian dialogues. Um, and most of the mainstream historians and researchers, they, have, they dismiss what he says in these dialogues as pure fantasies or as an analogy or something for something, for something different. But... <clears throat> For instance, Randall Carson, another one of these uh, independent researchers, he takes Plato very seriously and literally and thinks uh, that what he says in these dialogues is true, that it was Atlantis was a large island, island state uh, placed uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean about where the, or actually precisely where the Azores archipelago is today. At that time, sea level, the sea level was significantly lower than it is today, a couple of hundred meters perhaps, uh, because, and we know that because a lot of the water was locked in the big ice caps that were around the poles of the planets during the Ice Age. And Graham Hancock, another one, another maverick, a uh, scientist, researcher, uh, is also a proponent of Atlantis. And he thinks that when Atlantis perished in this cataclysm that I, that I mentioned, uh, a few, there were a few survivors, and those survivors proliferated crucial technology to some of the, the, the former Atlantean colonies, mm, mainly Egypt, uh, because Egypt was, uh, even according to to, uh, I mean, especially according to the accounts of Plato, one of the more, most important colonies that Atlantis had. And this would explain the mystical advanced technology that was 
uh, employed when they built these these enormous fantastic pyramids in Giza which the Egyptian the, the dynastic Egyptians couldn't have built because they only had bronze tools it was a bronze age culture so I am here on La Gomera one of the Canary Islands beautiful island with a subtropical rainforest behind me here you can't see that now but behind those hills those mountains there, there there's a big forest that gets its uh, moisture from from the clouds the, the constant clouds that are there a uh, fascinating place on this side it's drier of course i am here up uh, at maybe 700 or 800 meters something like that just almost directly above the sea which you can see behind me here. And I hope that you can also see behind those clouds there, there's another island, which is El Hierro. And then on this side, it is possible to see La Palma, which has had a, a volcanic eruption recently. And these are all parts of, those are the two westernmost islands uh, of the, the Canary Islands. And this is a small, this La Gomera is a small island very close to Tenerife which has the highest volcano. So anyway, uh, it's very fascinating to think that these islands were, I mean, way back uh, during the Ice Age, before the Ice Age ended, uh, the sea level was 100 to 200 meters lower than it is today. And then the landmass here was, was bigger, of course. And the people that were here, when the Spaniards arrived, um, they were French, the French and the Portuguese uh, arrived uh, early also, but it was the Spaniards who conquered, who uh, colonized these islands, Canary Islands, in the 16th, 15th and 16th centuries. And when they arrived, there was a, an Aboriginal people here, a native people called the Guanche. And it's fascinating to think that the Guanche were probably, possibly, <laughs> not probably, I can't say that really because the evidence isn't that clear, but possibly, uh descendants of the people who who uh, inhabited the the legendary uh land of atlantis which supposedly collapsed uh, during a cataclysm some 12 13000 years ago and it's it says in, in in the writings of plato that um i have to check that up but i think he says this that the Atlanteans had colonies around the sea. They were great seafarers and they had colonies. One of the colonies were, was the Canary Islands. And um, the, main, the, main, the Atlantean main uh, land was supposedly around the, where, where the Azores Islands are today. Anyway, so this was a colony. And also parts of North Africa was a colony, Morocco. And the Berber people, who are now uh, the dominating people in uh, Northwest Africa and Morocco and parts of Algeria. They look a bit different from, from uh, peoples further east. Some of them have blue eyes and things like that. And it, genetically, the Guanche, that has, been, that has been proven, the Guanche were to, to the mo for, for the most part, to the largest, the largest uh, part of their DNA material, <laughs> their, their genome was related to the Berber people. And we know that Atlantis had colonies on the Canary Islands and in Northwest Africa. It's kind of fascinating to think. It, it, it's, this, this is a magical place. These islands are wonderful. They're mostly known for their mass tourism, but there is so much more to experience and see. And uh, the night skies are just magnificent, spectacular. So go here if you have the chance. And the weather is nice. Mid-December, 20 degrees, sunny. Now, when did the advanced civilization of Atlantis itself appear? And from where did that ca come? From, from where did those people originate? Um, well, some three researchers take, take things very, very far back in time. And at some point you reach the very, also very mysterious period around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago when 
our species, specific species, Homo sapiens sapiens, uh, apparently, as, as it seems, very rapidly evolved and split from other hominids that were existing on the planet at that time. Another person that I have interviewed on the podcast in episode 30, Michael Tellinger, he takes, for instance, the accounts from the Sumerians, and the, what they documented on their clay, famous clay tablets many, many thousand years ago. He takes those accounts, those uh, legends or stories or, or documented facts that are written down on those, those clay tablets seriously. And they talk, for instance, about these uh, advanced groups or entities, perhaps you might call them, beings. Uh, they're described as some kind of gods or demigods, the Anunnaki, who for a very, very, very long, long ago came to earth from the skies. So demigods coming from the skies and interfering with humans in, in some kind of way. So this is, I mean, you can take this very far, of course, and you can say that it's just, uh, these are just fairy tales. That's a choice you can make. And this is the mainstream choice that has been made. But if you take it seriously, it means that the Anunnaki could be, I mean, if you take it literally, the Anunnaki could have been extraterrestrials arriving here on the planet uh, from outer space, from other uh, solar systems, star systems, and could have manipulated, if they were advanced, they might have been able to manip manipulate the hominids that were here, that were here and they, they chose the, the kind of hominid that they deemed suitable for this manipulation and manipulated the DNA which would explain some very odd features or features that are difficult to explain in our human bodies today, where, for instance, the, 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 the double helix, DNA double helix, is uh, so full of seemingly dormant uh, genes, which takes us to the whole UFO thing and whether we have all along on some level been in contact with extraterrestrials and whether we actually constitute a hybrid species, as some people say, uh, which means that we then share some features with uh, species from other star systems who seem to be able to exist on more dimensions than merely the physical, which of course, in, in turn, uh, means that um, we, you open the whole Pandora's box of, you know, the true human nature. Uh, you open the, the box of anything is possible, the anything is possible box. <laughs> Some people may fear what's in that box and might fear to, to go down that path. I personally think that, that doing this, going backwards in time, to be able to go inward and then forward is a very promising and very pertinent path to take. I just want to know the truth. I just want to know what happened. Who are we? Where do we come from? And where are we headed? Okay, that was that. Happy holidays now, everybody. See you in 2022. I can't believe I just said that number. 2022. Well, anyway, time's just an illusion. Bye, everyone. If you like this video and other interviews and talks on Mind the Shift, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support. Thank you.